zero day. Those little bombings were my way of saying hello. Alright, just to start off, I know this is a sinister and dark backdrop with allusions to terrorism and bad times, and this Ubisoft version of Vicky more than contributes to the futuristic setting. But I just have to ask, did any of y'all notice that that's the coffee shop from the crew too? Ubisoft deserves extra credit for that one. The story topic of Watch Dogs Legion is at the very least recognizable, but it'll still be interesting to see a Watch Dogs take on it. It's not really an issue that we've seen this done before, and is actually a smart way to reel people in. I mean, how you tell a story on this topic can more than offset the cliché-ness of it. On October 29th, we will get to see if it's going to be Equilibrium, Hunger Games, and V for Vendetta, or if it's going to be Battlefield, Earth, and Planet of the Apes. Now real quick, let's all bow our heads and pray that it's not these. <laughs> No, but for real though. Who allowed this shit? Now we all know how the revolution in these stories begin. Some fucked up event happens and the main character decides it's time. They then run into a wise character who tells them it's gonna take all of the people to fight to bring down the crazily broken system and this extremely corrupt government. But in the movies and games, it's always the main character and one or two of their friends who accomplish this feat. I mean, there are generally some side characters who actually do some important but forgetful actions. In Watch Dogs Legion, where you really see the uniqueness and development ambition is in the characters you can play as. I mean, you see in this sh you can play as anyone, a construction worker, a boxer, a lawyer, a CEO, a doctor, just some guy, just some girl, a grandma. <sighs> this had better be fucking good. <laughs> Hey, <laughs> the last one might not be that great, but still, it shows ambition and comedy. But in all honesty, don't let the goofy gimmicks and semi-silliness used for comic relief fool you. There's some real shit going on here. You got this asshole dictator guy, Albion, who's ruling over the people through technology and fear. You got corrupt cops arresting and killing people just because. You got this crazy ass evil lady who is kidnapping and enslaving people and is harvesting people's organs to sell on the black market. I mean, come on dog, Mary Kelly got some real issues. I mean, I guess she does do one nice thing. She gives the people she kidnaps choice. The two ultimatums she gives the people she kidnaps is to either be enslaved by her or die. <laughs> Point is, y'all know Ubisoft knows how to capture the level of cruelty in which people can go. We've known this ever since Garnier and Tamir. All I'm saying is we can use some goofy and silly comedy so we don't leave this game feeling the way we did after The Last of Us Part 2. What I've always loved about Ubisoft since AC1 in 2007 is that they always give you mad targets to take down. It always feels like every time you eliminate a target, you've removed a significant piece from this well-oiled, evil, convoluted machine. We don't yet know how many targets we're going to have to eliminate in Watch Dogs Legion, but according to the story trailer, Albion and Mary Kelly are just the tip of the iceberg. I'm guessing we're going to have to eliminate somewhere between 8 and 12 targets. Why, you ask? Because remember this little clip? But they're just the tip of the iceberg. See, I may not know this, but the British flag is actually a three-way mashup. The Red Cross is for St. George for England, the White Saltire is for St. Andrew for Scotland, and the Red Saltire of St. Patrick to represent Ireland. <laughs> I know y'all probably like, why are you giving us a history lesson on the flag? No, nah, just bear with me. My point is, is that each one of these shapes has four points, and each point could be another evil person that we have to eliminate. I mean, remember that the shapes that I just mentioned are all laid on top of each other to represent the British flag, and it was supposed to represent alliance. So, this could just be an alliance between a bunch of evil folks that we gotta kill. And speaking of targets to eliminate, I'm pretty sure this guy's gonna be on the list, which makes this rooftop meeting even more sus. I want no smoke with Serena Patel, and remember in the beginning when the evil version of Jarvis said this is Zero Day? Well, you realize that he is calling the event Zero Day, but you also realize he is saying his name is Zero Day, and it seems like stopping him is the main mission. What's really crazy is there could be a plot twist in which the evil people I was saying we need to eliminate could be suffering from a serious case of megalomania, or just have serious illusions of grandeur, and truly think the only way to stop the digital version of Ultron is to play their ordained role no matter how corrupt it is. But if it is the last one, instead of being all evil and corrupt, hey, yo, somebody just go get the nanites. 